Nikola Tesla, July 10, 1856, January 7, 1943, was a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist who is best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current, AC, electricity supply system. Born and raised in the Austrian Empire, Tesla studied engineering and physics in the 1870s without receiving a degree, and gained practical experience in the early 1880s working in telephony and at Continental Edison in the new electric power industry. He emigrated in 1884 to the United States, where he would become a naturalized citizen. He worked for a short time at the Edison Machine Works in New York City before he struck out on his own. With the help of partners to finance and market his ideas, Tesla set up laboratories and companies in New York to develop a range of electrical and mechanical devices. His alternating current, AC, induction motor and related polyphase AC patents, licensed by Westinghouse Electric in 1888, earned him a considerable amount of money and became the cornerstone of the polyphase system which that company would eventually market. Attempting to develop inventions he could patent and market, Tesla conducted a range of experiments with mechanical oscillators-slash-generators, electrical discharge tubes, and early X-ray imaging. He also built a wireless-controlled boat, one of the first ever exhibited. Tesla became well-known as an inventor and would demonstrate his achievements to celebrities and wealthy patrons at his lab, and was noted for his showmanship at public lectures. Throughout the 1890s, Tesla pursued his ideas for wireless lighting and worldwide wireless electric power distribution in his high-voltage, high-frequency power experiments in New York and Colorado Springs. In 1893, he made pronouncements on the possibility of wireless communication with his devices. Tesla tried to put these ideas to practical use in his unfinished Ward and Cliff Tower project, an intercontinental wireless communication and power transmitter, but ran out of funding before he could complete it. After Ward and Cliff, Tesla experimented with a series of inventions in the 1910s and 1920s with varying degrees of success. Having spent most of his money, Tesla lived in a series of New York hotels, leaving behind unpaid bills. He died in New York City in January 1943. Tesla's work fell into relative obscurity following his death, until 1960, when the General Conference on Weights and Measures named the SI unit of magnetic flux density the Tesla in his honor. There has been a resurgence in popular interest in Tesla since the 1990s. Early Years Nikola Tesla was born an ethnic Serb in the village Smilion, Lika County, in the Austrian Empire, present-day Croatia, on 10 July, O. S. 28 June, 1856. His father, Malutin Tesla, 1819-1879, was an Eastern Orthodox priest. Tesla's mother, Duka Tesla, née Mandic, 1822-1892, whose father was also an Orthodox priest, had a talent for making home craft tools and mechanical appliances and the ability to memorize Serbian and epic poems. Duka had never received a formal education. Tesla credited his eidetic memory and creative abilities to his mother's genetics and influence. Tesla's progenitors were from western Serbia, near Montenegro. Tesla was the fourth of five children. He had three sisters, Milka, Angelina and Marika, and an older brother named Dane who was killed in a horse-riding accident when Tesla was aged five. In 1861, Tesla attended primary school in Smileon where he studied German, arithmetic, and religion. In 1862, the Tesla family moved to the nearby Ghost Beach, Lika where Tesla's father worked as parish priest. Nikola completed primary school, followed by middle school. In 1870, Tesla moved far north to Karlovac to attend high school at the Higher Real Gymnasium. The classes were held in German, as it was a school within the Austro-Hungarian military frontier. Tesla would later write that he became interested in demonstrations of electricity by his physics professor. Tesla noted that these demonstrations of this mysterious phenomena made him want to know more of this wonderful force. Tesla was able to perform integral calculus in his head, which prompted his teachers to believe that he was cheating. He finished a four-year term in three years, graduating in 1873. In 1873, Tesla returned to Smileon. Shortly after he arrived, he contracted cholera, was bedridden for nine months and was near death multiple times. Tesla's father, in a moment of despair, who had originally wanted him to enter the priesthood, promised to send him to the best engineering school if he recovered from the illness. In 1874, Tesla evaded conscription into the Austro-Hungarian army in Smileon by running away southeast of Lika to Tomingaj, near Grakak. 
there he explored the mountains wearing hunter's garb. Tesla said that this contact with nature made him stronger, both physically and mentally. He read many books while in Tomingaj and later said that Mark Twain's works had helped him to miraculously recover from his earlier illness. In 1875, Tesla enrolled at Austrian Polytechnic in Graz, Austria, on a military frontier scholarship. During his first year, Tesla never missed a lecture, earned the highest grades possible, passed nine exams, nearly twice as many as required, started a Serb cultural club, and even received a letter of commendation from the dean of the technical faculty to his father which stated, your son is a star of first rank. During his second year, Tesla came into conflict with Professor Poskel over the Graham Dynamo, when Tesla suggested that commutators were not necessary. Tesla claimed that he worked from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m., no Sundays or holidays accepted. He was mortified when, his, father made light of, those, hard-won honors. After his father's death in 1879, Tesla found a package of letters from his professors to his father warning that unless he were removed from the school, Tesla would die through overwork. At the end of his second year, Tesla lost his scholarship and became addicted to gambling. During his third year, Tesla gambled away his allowance and his tuition money, later gambling back his initial losses and returning the balance to his family. Tesla said that he conquered, his, passion then and there, but later in the US he was again known to play billiards. When examination time came, Tesla was unprepared and asked for an extension to study, but was denied. He did not receive grades for the last semester of the third year and he never graduated from the university. In December 1878, Tesla left Graz and severed all relations with his family to hide the fact that he dropped out of school. His friends thought that he had drowned in the nearby Mur River. Tesla moved to Maribor, where he worked as a draftsman for 60 florins per month. He spent his spare time playing cards with local men on the streets. In March 1879, Tesla's father went to Maribor to beg his son to return home, but he refused. Nikola suffered a nervous breakdown around the same time. On March 24, 1879, Tesla was returned to Ghost Beach under police guard for not having a residence permit. On April 17, 1879, Maludin Tesla died at the age of 60 after contracting an unspecified illness. Some sources say that he died of a stroke. During that year, Tesla taught a large class of students in his old school in Ghost Beach. In January 1880, two of Tesla's uncles put together enough money to help him leave Ghost Beach for Prague, where he was to study. He arrived too late to enroll at Charles Ferdinand University, he had never studied Greek, a required subject, and he was illiterate in Czech, another required subject. Tesla did, however, attend lectures in philosophy at the university as an auditor but he did not receive grades for the courses working at Budapest Telephone Exchange. In 1881, Tesla moved to Budapest, Hungary, to work under Tivadar Puskas at a telegraph company, the Budapest Telephone Exchange. Upon arrival, Tesla realized that the company, then under construction, was not functional, so he worked as a draftsman in the central telegraph office instead. Within a few months, the Budapest Telephone Exchange became functional, and Tesla was allocated the chief electrician position. During his employment, Tesla made many improvements to the central station equipment and claimed to have perfected a telephone repeater or amplifier, which was never patented nor publicly described. Working at Edison In 1882, Tivadar Puskas got Tesla another job in Paris with the Continental Edison Company. Tesla began working in what was then a brand new industry, installing indoor incandescent lighting citywide in the form of an electric power utility. The company had several subdivisions and Tesla worked at the Société Electrique Edison the division in the Ivry-sur-Seine suburb of Paris in charge of installing the lighting system. There he gained a great deal of practical experience in electrical engineering. Management took notice of his advanced knowledge in engineering and physics and soon had him designing and building improved versions of generating dynamos and motors. They also sent him on to troubleshoot engineering problems at other Edison utilities being built around France and in Germany. Moved to the United States. In 1884, Edison manager Charles Batchelor, who had been overseeing the Paris installation, was brought back to the United States to manage the Edison Machine Works, a manufacturing division situated in New York City, and had asked that Tesla be brought to the U.S. as well. In June 1884, Tesla emigrated to the United States. He began working almost immediately at the Machine Works on Manhattan's Lower East Side, an overcrowded shop with a workforce of several hundred machinists, laborers, managing staff, 
and 20 field engineers struggling with the task of building the large electric utility in that city. As in Paris, Tesla was working on troubleshooting installations and improving generators. Historian W. Bernard Carlson notes Tesla may have met company founder Thomas Edison only a couple of times. One of those times was noted in Tesla's autobiography where, after staying up all night repairing the damaged dynamos on the ocean liner SS Oregon, he ran into Bachelor and Edison, who made a quip about their Parisian being out all night. After Tesla told them he had been up all night fixing the Oregon Edison commented to Bachelor that this is a damned good man. One of the projects given to Tesla was to develop an arc lamp-based street lighting system. Arc lighting was the most popular type of street lighting but it required high voltages and was incompatible with the Edison low-voltage incandescent system, causing the company to lose contracts in cities that wanted street lighting as well. Tesla's designs were never put into production, possibly because of technical improvements in incandescent street lighting or because of an installation deal that Edison cut with an arc lighting company. Tesla had been working at the machine works for a total of six months when he quit. What event precipitated his leaving is unclear. It may have been over a bonus he did not receive, either for redesigning generators or for the arc lighting system that was shelved. Tesla had previous run-ins with the Edison company over unpaid bonuses he believed he had earned. In his own biography, Tesla stated the manager of the Edison Machine Works offered a $50,000 bonus to design 24 different types of standard machines but it turned out to be a practical joke. Later versions of this story have Thomas Edison himself offering and then reneging on the deal, quipping Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. The size of the bonus in either story has been noted as odd since Machine Works manager Bachelor was stingy with pay and the company did not have that amount of cash, equivalent to $12 million today, on hand. Tesla's diary contains just one comment on what happened at the end of his employment, a note he scrawled across the two pages covering December 7, 1884, to January 4, 1885, saying goodbye to the Edison machine works. Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing Soon after leaving the Edison company, Tesla was working on patenting an arc lighting system, possibly the same one he had developed at Edison. In March 1885, he met with patent attorney Lemuel W. Sorrell, the same attorney used by Edison to obtain help with submitting the patents. Sorrell introduced Tesla to two businessmen, Robert Lane and Benjamin Vail, who agreed to finance an arc lighting manufacturing and utility company in Tesla's name, the Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. Tesla worked for the rest of the year obtaining the patents that included an improved DC generator, the first patents issued to Tesla in the US, and building and installing the system in Rahway, New Jersey. Tesla's new system gained notice in the technical press which commented on its advanced features. The investors showed little interest in Tesla's ideas for new types of alternating current motors and electrical transmission equipment. After the utility was up and running in 1886, they decided that the manufacturing side of the business was too competitive and opted to simply run an electric utility. They formed a new utility company, abandoning Tesla's company and leaving the inventor penniless. Tesla even lost control of the patents he had generated, since he had assigned them to the company in exchange for stock. He had to work at various electrical repair jobs and as a ditch digger for $2 per day. Later in life Tesla would recount that part of 1886 as a time of hardship, writing my high education in various branches of science, mechanics and literature seemed to me like a mockery. AC and the induction motor. In late 1886, Tesla met Alfred S. Brown, a Western Union superintendent, and New York attorney Charles F. Peck. The two men were experienced in setting up companies and promoting inventions and patents for financial gain. Based on Tesla's new ideas for electrical equipment, including a thermomagnetic motor idea, they agreed to back the inventor financially and handle his patents. Together they formed the Tesla Electric Company in April 1887, with an agreement that profits from generated patents would go one-third to Tesla, one-third to Peck and Brown, and one-third to fund development. They set up a laboratory for Tesla at 89 Liberty Street in Manhattan, where he worked on improving and developing new types of electric motors, generators, and other devices. In 1887, Tesla developed an induction motor that ran on alternating current, AC, a power system format that was rapidly expanding in Europe and the United States because of its advantages in long-distance, high-voltage transmission. The motor used polyphase current, which generated a rotating magnetic field to turn the motor, a principle that Tesla claimed to have conceived in 1882. This innovative electric motor, patented in May 1888, was a simple self-starting design that did not need a commutator, 
thus avoiding sparking and the high maintenance of constantly servicing and replacing mechanical brushes. Along with getting the motor patented, Peck and Brown arranged to get the motor publicized, starting with independent testing to verify it was a functional improvement, followed by press releases sent to technical publications for articles to run concurrent with the issue of the patent. Physicist William Arnold Anthony, who tested the motor, and Electrical World magazine editor Thomas Comerford Martin arranged for Tesla to demonstrate his AC motor on May 16, 1888 at the American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Engineers working for the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company reported to George Westinghouse that Tesla had a viable AC motor and related power system, something Westinghouse needed for the alternating current system he was already marketing. Westinghouse looked into getting a patent on a similar commutator-less, rotating magnetic field-based induction motor developed in 1885 and presented in a paper in March 1888 by Italian physicist Galileo Ferraris, but decided that Tesla's patent would probably control the market. In July 1888, Brown and Peck negotiated a licensing deal with George Westinghouse for Tesla's polyphase induction motor and transformer designs for $60,000 in cash and stock and a royalty of $2.50 per AC horsepower produced by each motor. Westinghouse also hired Tesla for one year for the large fee of $2,000, $56,900 in today's dollars, per month to be a consultant at the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company's Pittsburgh Labs. During that year, Tesla worked in Pittsburgh, helping to create an alternating current system to power the city's streetcars. He found it a frustrating period because of conflicts with the other Westinghouse engineers over how best to implement AC power. Between them, they settled on a 60-cycle AC system that Tesla proposed, to match the working frequency of Tesla's motor, but they soon found that it would not work for streetcars, since Tesla's induction motor could run only at a constant speed. They ended up using a DC traction motor instead. Market Turmoil Tesla's demonstration of his induction motor and Westinghouse's subsequent licensing of the patent, both in 1888, came at the time of extreme competition between electric companies. The three big firms, Westinghouse, Edison, and Thomson Houston, were trying to grow in a capital-intensive business while financially undercutting each other. There was even a war of currents propaganda campaign going on with Edison Electric trying to claim their direct current system was better and safer than the Westinghouse alternating current system. Competing in this market meant Westinghouse would not have the cash or engineering resources to develop Tesla's motor and the related polyphase system right away. Two years after signing the Tesla contract, Westinghouse Electric was in trouble. The near collapse of Barings Bank in London triggered the financial panic of 1890, causing investors to call in their loans to W.E., Westinghouse Electric. The sudden cash shortage forced the company to refinance its debts. The new lenders demanded that Westinghouse cut back on what looked like excessive spending on acquisition of other companies, research, and patents, including the promoter royalty and the Tesla contract. At that point, the Tesla induction motor had been unsuccessful and was stuck in development. Westinghouse was paying a $15,000 a year guaranteed royalty even though operating examples of the motor were rare and polyphase power systems needed to run it were even rarer. In early 1891, George Westinghouse explained his financial difficulties to Tesla in stark terms, saying that, if he did not meet the demands of his lenders, he would no longer be in control of Westinghouse Electric and Tesla would have to deal with the bankers to try to collect future royalties. The advantages of having Westinghouse continue to champion the motor probably seemed obvious to Tesla and he agreed to release the company from the royalty payment clause in the contract. Six years later Westinghouse would purchase Tesla's patent for a lump sum payment of $216,000 as part of a patent sharing agreement signed with General Electric, a company created from the 1892 merger of Edison and Thomson Houston. New York Laboratories the money Tesla made from licensing his AC patents made him independently wealthy and gave him the time and funds to pursue his own interests. In 1889, Tesla moved out of the Liberty Street shop Peck and Brown had rented in for the next dozen years would work out of a series of workshop-slash-laboratory spaces in Manhattan. These included a lab at 175 Grand Street, 1889-1892, the fourth floor of 33-35 South Fifth Avenue, 1892-1895, and 6th and 7th floors of 46 and 48 East Houston Street, 1895-1902. Tesla and his hired staff would conduct some of his most significant work in these workshops. Tesla Coil In the summer of 1889, Tesla traveled to the 1889 Exposition Universelle in Paris and learned of Heinrich Hertz's 1886-88 experiments that proved the existence of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. 
Tesla found this new discovery refreshing and decided to explore it more fully. In repeating, and then expanding on, these experiments, Tesla tried powering a Ruhmkorff coil with a high-speed alternator he had been developing as part of an improved arc lighting system but found that the high-frequency current overheated the iron core and melted the insulation between the primary and secondary windings in the coil. To fix this problem Tesla came up with his Tesla coil with an air gap instead of insulating material between the primary and secondary windings and an iron core that could be moved to different positions in or out of the coil. Citizenship On July 30, 1891, aged 35, Tesla became a naturalized citizen of the United States. In the same year, he patented his Tesla coil. Wireless lighting. After 1890, Tesla experimented with transmitting power by inductive and capacitive coupling using high AC voltages generated with his Tesla coil. He attempted to develop a wireless lighting system based on near-field inductive and capacitive coupling and conducted a series of public demonstrations where he lit Geissler tubes and even incandescent light bulbs from across a stage. He would spend most of the decade working on variations of this new form of lighting with the help of various investors but none of the ventures succeeded in making a commercial product out of his findings. In 1893 at St. Louis, Missouri, the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and the National Electric Light Association, Tesla told onlookers that he was sure a system like his could eventually conduct intelligible signals or perhaps even power to any distance without the use of wires by conducting it through the earth. Tesla served as a vice president of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers from 1892 to 1894, the forerunner of the modern-day IEEE, along with the Institute of Radio Engineers. Steam-powered oscillating generator Trying to come up with a better way to generate alternating current, Tesla developed a steam-powered reciprocating electricity generator. He patented it in 1893 and introduced it at the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition that year. Steam would be forced into the oscillator and rush out through a series of ports, pushing a piston up and down that was attached to an armature. The magnetic armature vibrated up and down at high speed, producing an alternating magnetic field. This induced alternating electric current in the wire coils located adjacent. It did away with the complicated parts of a steam engine-slash-generator, but never caught on as a feasible engineering solution to generate electricity. Polyphase System and the Columbian Exposition at the beginning of 1893, Westinghouse engineer Benjamin Lamb had made great progress developing an efficient version of Tesla's induction motor, and Westinghouse Electric started branding their complete polyphase AC system as the Tesla polyphase system. They believed that Tesla's patents gave them patent priority over other AC systems. Westinghouse Electric asked Tesla to participate in the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago where the company had a large space in a building devoted to electrical exhibits. Westinghouse Electric won the bid to light the exposition with alternating current and it was a key event in the history of AC power, as the company demonstrated to the American public the safety, reliability, and efficiency of a fully integrated alternating current system. Tesla showed a series of electrical effects related to alternating current as well as his wireless lighting system, using a demonstration he had previously performed throughout America and Europe. These included using high-voltage, high-frequency alternating current to light a wireless gas discharge lamp. An observer noted. Within the room were suspended two hard rubber plates covered with tin foil. These were about 15 feet apart, and served as terminals of the wires leading from the transformers. When the current was turned on, the lamps or tubes, which had no wires connected to them, but lay on a table between the suspended plates, or which might be held in the hand in almost any part of the room, were made luminous. These were the same experiments and the same apparatus shown by Tesla in London about two years previous where they produced so much wonder and astonishment. Tesla also explained the principles of the rotating magnetic field in an induction motor by demonstrating how to make a copper egg stand on end, using a device that he constructed known as the Egg of Columbus and introduced his new steam-powered oscillator AC generator. Consulting on Niagara In 1893, Edward Dean Adams, who headed up the Niagara Falls Cataract Construction Company, sought Tesla's opinion on what system would be best to transmit power generated at the falls. Over several years, there had been a series of proposals and open competitions on how best to use power generated by the falls. Among the systems proposed by several U.S. and European companies were two-phase and three-phase AC, high-voltage DC, and compressed air. Adams asked Tesla for information about the current state of all the competing systems. Tesla advised Adams that a two-phase system would be the most reliable, and that there was a Westinghouse system to light incandescent bulbs using two-phase alternating current. 
the company awarded a contract to Westinghouse Electric for building a two-phase AC generating system at the Niagara Falls, based on Tesla's advice and Westinghouse's demonstration at the Columbian Exposition that they could build a complete AC system. At the same time, a further contract was awarded to General Electric to build the AC distribution system. The Nikola Tesla Company In 1895, Edward Dean Adams, impressed with what he saw when he toured Tesla's lab, agreed to help found the Nikola Tesla Company, set up to fund, develop, and market a variety of previous Tesla patents and inventions as well as new ones. Alfred Brown signed on, bringing along patents developed under Peck and Brown. The board was filled out with William Birch Rankin and Charles F. Coney. It found few investors, the mid-1890s was a tough time financially, and the wireless lighting and oscillators patents it was set up to market never panned out. The company would handle Tesla's patents for decades to come. Lamp fire. In the early morning hours of March 13, 1895, the South Fifth Avenue building that housed Tesla's lab caught fire. It started in the basement of the building and was so intense Tesla's fourth-floor lab burned and collapsed into the second floor. The fire not only set back Tesla's ongoing projects, it destroyed a collection of early notes and research material, models, and demonstration pieces, including many that had been exhibited at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. Tesla told the New York Times I'm in too much grief to talk. What can I say? After the fire Tesla moved to 46 and 48 East Houston Street and rebuilt his lab on the 6th and 7th floors. X-ray experimentation. Starting in 1894, Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radiant energy of invisible kinds after he had noticed damaged film in his laboratory in previous experiments, later identified as Rentgen rays or X-rays. His early experiments were with Crookes tubes, a cold cathode electrical discharge tube. Tesla may have inadvertently captured an X-ray image, predating, by a few weeks, Wilhelm Röntgen's December 1895 announcement of the discovery of X-rays when he tried to photograph Mark Twain illuminated by a Geissler tube, an earlier type of gas discharge tube. The only thing captured in the image was the metal locking screw on the camera lens. In March 1896, after hearing of Wilhelm Röntgen's discovery of X-ray and X-ray imaging, radiography, Tesla proceeded to do his own experiments in X-ray imaging developing a high-energy single-terminal vacuum tube of his own design that had no target electrode and that worked from the output of the Tesla coil. The modern term for the phenomenon produced by this device is brain strahlung or breaking radiation. In his research, Tesla devised several experimental setups to produce X-rays. Tesla held that, with his circuits, the instrument will enable one to generate Rentgen rays of much greater power than obtainable with ordinary apparatus. Tesla noted the hazards of working with his circuit and single-node X-ray producing devices. In his many notes on the early investigation of this phenomenon, he attributed the skin damage to various causes. He believed early on that damage to the skin was not caused by the Rentgen rays, but by the ozone generated in contact with the skin, and to a lesser extent, by nitrous acid. Tesla incorrectly believed that X-rays were longitudinal waves, such as those produced in waves in plasmas. These plasma waves can occur in force-free magnetic fields. On July 11, 1934, the New York Herald Tribune published an article on Tesla, in which he recalled an event that would occasionally take place while experimenting with his single electrode vacuum tubes. A minute particle would break off the cathode, pass out of the tube, and physically strike him. Tesla said he could feel a sharp stinging pain where it entered his body, and again at the place where it passed out. In comparing these particles with the bits of metal projected by his electric gun, Tesla said, the particles in the beam of force will travel much faster than such particles, and they will travel in concentrations. Radio Remote Control In 1898, Tesla demonstrated a boat that used a coherer-based radio control, which he dubbed Telautomat into the public during an electrical exhibition at Madison Square Garden. The crowd that witnessed the demonstration made outrageous claims about the workings of the boat, such as magic, telepathy, and being piloted by a trained monkey hidden inside. Tesla tried to sell his idea to the U.S. military as a type of radio-controlled torpedo, but they showed little interest. Remote radio control remained a novelty until World War I and afterward, when a number of countries used it in military programs. Tesla took the opportunity to further demonstrate teleautomatics in an address to a meeting of the commercial club in Chicago, while he was traveling to Colorado Springs, on May 13, 1899 wireless power. From the 1890s through 1906, 
Tesla spent a great deal of his time and fortune on a series of projects trying to develop the transmission of electrical power without wires. It was an expansion of his idea of using coils to transmit power that he had been demonstrating in wireless lighting. He saw this as not only a way to transmit large amounts of power around the world but also, as he had pointed out in his earlier lectures, a way to transmit worldwide communications. At the time Tesla was formulating his ideas, there was no feasible way to wirelessly transmit communication signals over long distances, let alone large amounts of power. Tesla had studied radio waves early on, and came to the conclusion that part of existing study on them, by Hertz, was incorrect. Also, this new form of radiation was widely considered at the time to be a short-distance phenomenon that seemed to die out in less than a mile. Tesla noted that, even if theories on radio waves were true, they were totally worthless for his intended purposes since this form of invisible light would diminish over distance just like any other radiation and would travel in straight lines right out into space, becoming hopelessly lost. By the mid-1890s, Tesla was working on the idea that he might be able to conduct electricity long distance through the Earth or the atmosphere, and began working on experiments to test this idea including setting up a large resonance transformer magnifying transmitter in his East Houston Street lab. Seeming to borrow from a common idea at the time that the Earth's atmosphere was conductive, he proposed a system composed of balloons suspending, transmitting, and receiving, electrodes in the air above 30,000 feet, 9,100 meters, in altitude, where he thought the lower pressure would allow him to send high voltages, millions of volts, long distances.